How the fuck are you fairy foreskins doing today? It's the Aussie Metalhead here. It's the fucking weekend. We made it to Saturday. Hope you guys are having a good one. I know I certainly fucking am. So I noticed today, guys, that I haven't done an album review in a while, and I, I figured that before we really get into it that I would kind of explain why that is. Aside with me really spending far too much time playing God of War, and oh my god, if you haven't played the new God of War, just fucking holy shit, what are you doing? Go play it now. Fucking go play it now. It's fucking incredible. So aside from me kind of like wasting my life away, I have been very preoccupied um, with my uh, band routine. Um, we've done a few more gigs recently and also just had to really start getting in and practicing more. Uh, that's where the majority of my time is going these days, trying to learn as much as I can and improve as much as I can as well. So as a result of all this, I kind of haven't really been sitting down and investing much time in any new albums lately. Sure, I've been listening to stuff that's just been coming out, there's been stuff that's been really grabbing me, but since I haven't really had so much free time lately, well, yeah, God of War aside. <laughs> so as a result of all this, I really haven't sat down and invested too much time with any new albums. Um, I haven't sat down and listened to something on repeat, just uh, deconstructing, analysing, writing down my thoughts like I would normally do for an album review. Haven't been doing that lately, but I really wanted to get at least a video out this week for you guys. I feel like I haven't talked to you guys in a while. So today I'll be bringing you another issue of bands you should be listening to. We've got a pretty cool multicultural set of bands to talk about today. Hopefully you can walk away from this with some pretty fucking good new bangers to listen to. So, let's fucking get into it. Alright, so the first band we're talking about today is Perth's Depravity. These guys are a fucking sick, brutal, slash kind of tech death-ish uh, band hailing right here from Perth, Western Australia. So Depravity very much sound like they're the fucking offspring of the classic late 80s, early 90s kind of forming death metal scene. I get a lot of Morbid Angel sort of uh, Bay Area influences with these guys, it's, it, albeit much better fucking produced, much better mixed. I love the depth and clarity of the drums and the vocals in particular. Everything feel has this mammoth fucking weight to it, the drums in particular. The riffs are really, really fucking well balanced with everything, and I really like the levels on the vocals. I think that this is just, it's a very, very nicely mixed fucking album, I must say. Albeit still extremely raw, not sacrificing or jeopardizing the disgusting fucking heavy dissonance that you must have when it comes to making death metal. Now, as I said, I find these guys to be more on the, the brutal side of the death metal genre. I did, you know, techish elements going on here. It's, it's not, you know, it's not origin or arch spire levels of craziness or anything like that. But it's definitely enough to, to make you sit back a few times and go, God damn, that was some very, very tight picking. That was some very, very fucking interesting writing going on. I suppose if I were to name one, you know, real issue with this album, the kind of a reason that stopped me from reviewing it was simply that much of what I have to say about this album is already so blatantly obvious if you, anyone who's sat down and listened to this album. My opinions, you know, I'm, I don't feel like I would really bring that much to the table when it comes to this album, uh, just because it is very much influenced by this classic era of death metal, and this is an era that we're also well acquainted with. It's sort of like, do you remember those guys? Well, it's, it's sort of like this, but in a, in a more of a modernized um, package, you know, the 21st century in terms of technology and mixing. So I really don't feel like I have that much creative insight to really put in. This has sort of just been this great, fucking brutal, groovy romp for me, chucking it on in the fucking car, going from the day to day, just really, really enjoying these tunes. Uh, I give it a solid recommendation. I think that if you're a fan of classic era death metal, but you want something that's maybe a bit on the techier side, uh, if you've you know, done so much of this classic death metal to death, you want something a little more uh, invoking, a little bit more technical, this is definitely a really fucking good album to go for. And it's supporting the Perth metal scene, which I am always 100% behind. So, Depravity, Evil Upheaval, great fucking album title, by the way. Fucking high recommendation, check him the fuck out. The next band we're talking about is the Scottish hardcore metalcore death metal hybrid that is Man Must Die. Holy fuck, man. I, I seriously, this, this was the album that I was the closest towards sitting down and doing a full album review. But 
for the sake of uh, getting, you know, multiple bands out to you guys, talking about some different sort of stuff, I figured I'd chuck them in here. I might end up doing a full review of this album if I'm so inclined, because holy shit, this album has just caught me by the scroat and not fucking let go for the last couple of months, man. Holy shit. Okay, so the best way for me to describe Man Must Die Sound, which I do think is actually quite different, it's, it, it's taking some pretty interesting elements from a group of different genres and bringing together them in a way that just is, is so not derivative. What I'm going to describe might sound fairly pedestrian. Oh, what is it? Just deathcore? Death metal, metalcore, hardcore? What, what, what the fuck is it? Well, take really intense fucking mental blast beat level death metal drums, throw some fucking sick ass fucking metalcore, hardcore riffs over it. Not cliched, interesting much faster than you would commonly expect, and just with some really cool twists and turns in there as well. Not to mention with vocals that take me right back to being like 15, 16, listening to fucking old school napalm death again, man, because holy fuck this cunt reminds me of Barney Greenway, man. It's absolutely insane how much he fucking reminds me of Barney, dude. There's a definite hardcore edge in here as well, with some more sort of gang chanty kind of sections and bridges and choruses and whatnot, but it's done in a way that it's delivered with such ferocity through sort of like the filter of death metal that's just done in a way that's so passionate, it grabs your attention straight out the fucking game. Absolute standout tracks for me would have to be the Anti-Social Network, absolutely fucking fantastic, The Price You Pay, Absence Makes the Hate Grow Stronger, and the currently playing Sectarian. Absolutely blinding, blistering fucking album. I'm an absolutely massive fucking fan. And this album is not a new one either. It came out all the way back in 2013, I believe. I haven't done a great deal of research on these guys, but I've thoroughly enjoyed this album. I intend to go back and listen to all the rest of their material as soon as I can put this one down. If Even if you're not a fan of metalcore or hardcore, I still heartily fucking recommend you check out this album, man, because I have shown this to people who, like myself, are not really metalcore inclined anymore, and they've still really, really fucking enjoyed this one. So yeah, Man Must Die's Peace was never an option. Send fucking Sation. Alright guys, this is the last band we'll be talking about today. This is, and I believe I have saved the craziest for last here, this is Sweden's Surreption. These guys are classed as some kind of crazy-ass fucking progressive, technical, brutal death metal. One of those really long-winded, just arrogant as fuck labels. I know I'm so guilty of using labels, it's hypocritical of me to say that. But as a critic, as someone, I was a wannabe critic, as someone who wants to think at least that they're at least somewhat educated about music, it can be quite an easy go-to way of describing and analysing different forms of art. And for me, even though it's such a long-winded statement, I feel like only something like that could adequately summarise what exactly it is that Surreption do. And what they do is deliver insane compositions with just more time changes and time signature changes than you can shake a fucking stick at. It fucking escalates and it slows, and it's just insane. It feels like these songs have a mind of their own. It's a labyrinth style of songwriting. If you're a fan of early psychroptic, you just want these crazy, winding fucking compositions. This is a fantastic band for you. I am, of course, talking about their latest album, released this year, not a couple of months ago now, Monument of the End. Now, I have been listening to Surreption for a short while now. I was turned on to it recently by a friend, and I've just been making their, my way through their back catalogue. I've really enjoyed what I've heard, but this album just seems to take the fucking cake for me. I haven't been able to go back to their early stuff because this shit has just grabbed my fucking attention. The currently playing track, Nothingness Becoming, was the song that got me interested in this album. I've since obviously listened to the whole thing multiple times, and out of everything that I've talked about today, I feel like this one has probably hit me the hardest. I mean, Man Must Die and Depravity. Absolutely fucking sensational. I've loved them both for very different reasons. But this was the album where I was left with that expression on my face, that holy shit, this is blowing my mind right now. There's so much that works so fucking well here, but I have to call I mean, the drums, exceptional. This dude's a machine, man. Holy fuck. The fact that they can pull this shit off live as well, always to a huge credit. The riffs themselves with the insane number of 
time changes, the dissonance, the overlaying, the, the, the overtures, everything that these cunts are doing is, is pretty fucking impressive, man. They weave leads, riffs, grooves, hooks, melodies. It all just works together in a way that sort of doesn't work together. Everything's just colliding. It, it, it's fucking craziness, man. It's like a demolition derby turned death metal. It really, that's what I think of when I listen to Surreption. And of course, the fucking vocals. I love this guy's register. He doesn't really mix things up too much, but his ability to create memorable, catchy vocal fucking lines to this insanity, really, really impressive. It's somewhere that I find tech death vocalists struggle quite a fucking bit is when it comes to keeping up with the chaos of the music and still managing to create vocal lines that are at least semi-memorable. This is accomplished and then some here in Surreption. If you're a fan of Tech Death at all, I just, I, I, and even if you're not, this is some pretty fucking next level shit. I very much fucking recommend that people check them out. So that's it for today guys, I hope you've enjoyed this fucking video, my apologies again for the lack of album reviews, I will get up off my ass and proceed to do a few more of them, I really just need to sit down, listen to something new. As usual, if you guys have any recommendations, anything that you knew that you guys have been cranking lately, please feel free to leave it down in the comments. And if you want to leave a fucking like and a subscribe as well, that would be absolutely fucking mint cunt, would Mundo appreciate it. Anyway, guys, so that's enough from fucking me today. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your fucking weekend. And as for next time, stay sick.